This technique of drawing the effective detail rather than the actual detail is not just one of the most important techniques I use, but it's probably the most versatile. I use it in so many situations, whether it's leaves on a tree, whether it's grass on the ground, whether it's bricks in a wall, tiles on a roof, people in a crowd, anywhere where the detail is overwhelming to draw, drawing the effect of the detail is a very important technique to have. In this example, we look at something that perhaps I haven't used it on before, possibly because it's not the sort of subject I usually draw, but that's looking at this technique in drawing overwhelming detail in an engineering context, an engineering structure. And here we have the magnificent engineering feat of the Sydney Harbour Bridge. And the sheer amount of detail in the ironwork can be very intimidating when we go to draw the bridge because it's such a fundamental part of what's happening. Now, it's not an easy subject to draw anyway, just given its shape and the curves of the arches and the fact that we see through multiple layers of ironwork, as well as the horizontal connecting pieces as well. But it's still a great subject and if we draw Sydney and Sydney Harbour, it's going to pop up in all sorts of places from all sorts of angles. I found this photo in a collection of photos I took a few years ago and I thought it was a good one to experiment with and to demo with on drawing the effect of this ironwork. So the important thing firstly is to simply to get the things that we're drawing in proportion as best we can. My, my pylon right in the center of our scene almost is probably just a little bit too tall. But notwithstanding that, the lightness of the stone makes a lovely contrast with the dark of the, the steel. These pylons on the Sydney Harbour Bridge are purely decorative. They don't have any structural use whatsoever. So what I'm doing, firstly, I establish the curves of the bridge as accurately as I can. That's the starting point. It's an arch, and this is a severely foreshortened view. But it, there are still curves that we need to represent. And then I've done the crossbars going up the arch. Now, I did those first because they are the closest part of the ironwork to us. And they are visually fairly dominant. So the challenge will be at the end to still have them having some sort of visual prominence. It's what's behind them that's going to be more complex to draw. Now they do foreshorten as they move further away from us as they go up the arch and so the gaps between the, the cross pieces get smaller and smaller. Now I'm also, you'll notice, looking at the curves that go inside what we've drawn. So I'm in effect drawing the arch that we can't see on the far side of the bridge that we're seeing the inside of through the center of the, the bridge. And because of the way these arches are constructed and because of the, if you like, the geometric patterns th the joining pieces make, from different angles they create a different densities in different parts. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to, looking at the overall proportion of what I'm doing, now seeking to recreate the densities of value created by the positions of the ironwork from this angle. I'm not really trying to draw the ironwork, I'm trying to draw the effect of the ironwork, which in this bit I'm doing right now, is simply the amount of darkness which happens. And that's what I'm doing again. Now, now I'm reinforcing some of the crossbar pieces that I've already drawn because I don't want to lose them. As I, as I progress other inner parts that we see, I want to maintain the visual dominance of these cross pieces. 
because they will help the whole thing keep some sort of structural form and not just end up being a mishmash of lots of little lines in all sorts of directions. Now we have some vertical lines that we see quite predominantly from this viewpoint through as well. And so now I do the arch. Originally when the bridge was built, on one side of the bridge we had trains travelling through these arches and on the other side we had trams and the cars were in the centre part. When trams were got rid of, sadly enough, in Sydney in the early 60s, it was made into a pedestrian... No, it wasn't. It was made into more cars. So now I'm, I'm working at the support for the approach to the bridge and now we start to have some of the other details in this scene and the, foli the foliage of a tree that's much closer to us than probably anything else in this scene on the left. But I really just wanted to establish the part of the paper we needed to preserve because I still am just concentrating on finishing creating the effect of the bridge because that includes the supporting, the supporting engineering for the roadway approaching the bridge. We have these two large flags. One is the Australian flag and the other is the New South Wales state flag. And we often fly different flags up there for a whole range of state and national reasons and celebrations. So just adjusting that curve a little bit. And so I now think I need to just finish this ironwork here and get the tree in. I haven't, I haven't quite worked out at this point exactly how much detail I want to draw but in the end I draw the whole scene. So there's the roof of this house. Now you'll notice the road curves down away from us because we're moving down towards the harbour and I'm actually in an area of Sydney called the Rocks which is the western side of Circular Quay and the Opera House is on the eastern side of Circular Quay. So the bridge, the bridge stands on a headland or yeah, a very small headland and the opera house is on the corresponding headland on the other side of the cove which we call circular key so just get the other tower the north pylon on the eastern side And now again in here, I don't, I don't want to draw the detail. I want to just create the effect. And so getting some nice triangular shapes of darkness that I can then hatch over and make even darker towards the top, in my mind, is going to create the effect that I see at a glance. I mean, this is not an area of the drawing that anyone's going to look at closely. So I can be quite, quite loose in my drawing of the effect. So now I have, uh, for me anyway, the, the tricky situation of a row of cars and because the street is sloping downwards, it's even a little more tricky because we don't see all of the cars or the couple of cars that are further down the street. Uh, part of their wheels or part of their car, the car itself is hidden by the curve of the, the road. And so that's an important sort of detail to notice. Uh, breathed a sigh of relief when I drew the pole, perhaps a tiny bit too wide, but generally straight. And it's for, for subjects such as that, that it is good to at times practice straight, quick, brisk, confident lines, horizontally and vertically just as an exercise without, without the pressure of the drawing to go with them because they are very useful to be able to do when we need them. So there's a, a quite a lot of foliage which is quite good because it lets me progress large areas fairly quickly. 
this drawing took me in real time 35 minutes to do. So you're seeing it approximately at double time. I have cut out a few reasonably large chunks of time towards the end where I stopped and thought about what I was doing and whether I was finished or wanting to do a little bit more. So now I've got this closest car and unfortunately I didn't make it quite wide enough. It should just have gone off to the right a little bit more. So it ends up looking like a bit of a, I don't know, toy car almost. But yeah, you can see that, that that right fender would have looked better coming out just a little bit more. Note the shadow lines on the road for under the car, really important to help create a sense of this is a real object. A car will invariably put a shadow on the ground unless it's a very cloudy day and there's shadow everywhere. Now this, this tall chimney is from, I'm not sure what it's from, it's probably some sort of sewerage vent is my guess. When I was a boy it had a, a um, triangular sign wrapped around it that was very much a feature of going over the bridge and looking at f for an early type of stove manufacturer. So now just adding these lines for the foliage shadows. So again, we're using the same technique of drawing the effect of the detail for the trees. We're not drawing leaves, we're not trying to capture leaves. We're trying to create an effect so that at a glance, our brain says, oh, that's a tree. And so the silhouette edges are very important. And then the areas of light and dark, because what we want to do is to try and suggest the overall form of the surface of the tree, because there's no chance of drawing the individual flower, um, individual leaves. In the same way with the bridge, what we've done is we've tried to create the overall effect of the overall form of the engineering structure of the bridge, of multiple planes and layers of steel girders going in different directions and of looking through them all, all at once. Create the visual effect of that without having to draw each one. So at this point, I decide just to add a few, a few brick textures to the pylon. And again, I'm drawing the effect of the stonework, not the actual detail of it. The important thing is that I get the scale correct, that I don't draw them too large or too small. The ones I do draw, I need to get the size right relative to the overall structure. But otherwise, I'm just drawing the effect. I'm giving the brain a few pieces of information to go, oh, oh, this is either made of stone or, as is the case, it's faced in stone. And then some shadow across the road and some shadow under the cars. And now I'm just trying to work out where will I stop? And now I do a whole lot of hatching on these trees. And I decide to strengthen the darkness just past what we can see of the road. I think I probably went too far in doing that. Again, just checking for, are there any small parts where I just think it's a bit light on or I can't do anything about anything being too dark? A little bit of effect of reflection on the windscreens of the cars. It's best to try and avoid either leaving them completely blank or totally blacking them all in. It's better that we try and draw the effect of the reflections. And now I'm just checking the curves and to see, see if what comes through in terms of the effect of the steel work. I strengthen these diagonal ties and just add a little more detail in parts. And then I decide to put this foliage right up into the top left corner as a device to help frame and to give an indication of where the scene ends. Again, larger lines to reflect the fact that it's closer to us. 
G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. Well, another visit to Sydney Harbour, this time not a ferry, but the Harbour Bridge. Look, it's a great example to try the technique of drawing the effective detail, not the detail. I hope you give it a go. You'll find this photo of the bridge on my channel community page. It's a different type of example from the sorts of things we've used this technique in, in other videos. But I think it's a great example. And if we can master the technique for structures for engineering effects, then it opens up a whole range of subjects that we can draw uh, with a much greater effect of realism. But look, whatever you draw and however you draw it, make sure you have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.